now let's see some coding. Before taking our hands on coding, you should have to know a few things about class. Anything you write in the class is known as the members of the class. So whatever you write inside the class is the member of the class. In addition, by default, all the members in the class are private. That means if you don't define any access modifier, we're not really going deep into the access modifier right now, but uh, try to remember that it will uh, help you cope with other lessons later on that when you do not write any access modifier it assumes that a member inside a class is private and the private is the most restricted modifier access modifier and private uh, do not let you access any members inside the class unless it has any other modifier so if you do not declare any modifier before any member that means you cannot access that member outside of the class and any member inside the class you can access by its name or you could write this and that would be the explicit way to call a member inside a class this and the member name this dot and then the member name so let's say you have a property or a field let's say first name to access that you could write inside a method first name and then you have the property but you can also write these dot first name these are the same thing so it also solves a problem when you have a parameter as a first name same as your member in the class to differentiate those you can use this when you say this it will explicitly mean that you are meaning or you are uh, trying to access a member inside the class and when you don't write that this it means you are trying to access the parameter so this is the things that uh, you should know before moving on to the coding so let's dive in this is a pretty simple console application and we have another uh, project uh, attached it. it is an empty project uh, class library project so in this project we have a basic console application and another class called person the person that we have seen in the slides is defined here it's very simple write, write the fields we have written the fields public fields these are known as fields and uh, this is public modifier we are going to talk about access modifiers later but for now just understand that public means that everyone can access it that's it so we really put those pro uh, fields to public access modifier so uh, everyone can access it and we have two methods in the slides you have seen many behaviors but we only uh, write two method that's it for simplification so that's our class so so how to write a class uh, let me write it again so that you can understand write class and the class name in this case person maybe two is a person class and uh, let's write the properties public and in this case these are uh, the fields not properties don't confuse the properties with fields try to remember that these are the properties we're going to talk about uh, sorry these are the fields and we're going to talk about the uh, properties later on so string first name first name let's say just and to write a method to write a method work and define the method that's it so that's how you're going to create a class this is it so a class should be one class should be in one uh, class file but you can write multiple class in one uh, CS file but it's not really recommended the best practice is to put your uh, other classes or interfaces into separate files this way you could find your classes very easily and uh, the best way is to keep your uh, class name as your c -sharp file name so in this case the uh, c -sharp file name is person so I write my 
uh, class name is person. If you go to the program, uh, this has a class name of program like this. So this is the best convention, but you could write whatever you want. It will not complain and it will run just fine. So that's it. So we have seen the class. Let's see uh, an instantiation of the class. So person, person, you could write anything. You don't have to write only the person, but for simplification, I'm just writing the object name as person. That's it. And new, like this. So to change the first name, I just go to the first name and say that first name is Elias. That's it. For now, that's it. And let's say that I tell my person to walk and let's see what's happening. Elias is walking. That's it. It happens like this because I have a console.writeLine method in uh, the walk method. As you can see, it's very simple, nothing uh, complex here. So that's how you uh, instantiate an object from a class and then you manipulate the object by accessing the properties or calling a method. To call a method, you, uh, when, whenever you see in a programming language, in most popular programming language, this uh, uh, parenthesis is, you have to understand that this is a method. So it's a method, logic or behavior. What, you have, what we have discussed earlier. So that's it. Uh, and let's go to our slides now. So let's see a class constructor because a class, uh, when a class is created, the constructor is the first method that is invoked. A class could have zero or multiple constructor. Even though a class doesn't have a uh, constructor it will call the constructor implicitly so constructor is always called whenever you call new new then a uh, person the constructor is implicitly called even though there is no constructor when you write a constructor it is explicitly called so let's see some examples of constructor encoding so here I'm in the Visual Studio. Uh, we are going to the person class. To write the constructor, what you can do is write a public and then write the same name as your uh, class name. That's your constructor. The first, uh, the exact name as your class name. That's your constructor. So you can have zero or multiple constructor. We're going to talk about multiple constructor later, but you can have multiple constructor by overloading method. We're not going to talk about overloading right now. We're going to talk about overloading right later. So when we talk about overloading, you'll understand that how you can create multiple uh, constructors. And you could do something uh, like this. You are uh, initi initiating, uh, let's say, an array or something like that. Whatever this type of object you do, uh, work you do, you can do it in the constructor section. So let's just go very simple and write line that a person is created. Person is created with name let's see that what happens to the name so uh, first name that's it so let's run it run the code we don't need any change in our code I say whenever we call the person the uh, person is created method is executed but the person name is really empty so it really doesn't show anything you really go to the code it doesn't it's really empty empty string null string so it doesn't show anything so uh, it only uh, shows those those two console write lines because uh, this was the first one executed and the next executed when the walk method is called that's it it's very simple not complicated 
So another thing about the constructor, uh, in Visual Studio you could uh, write constructor very easily. If you write CTOR and hit tab, you will have your constructor. That's it. So let's just delete those lines because because we are not really interested in the constructor of a person right now. Uh, let's go to our slides.